Hey, it's Matt, uh, and we're back for the second video uh, in the Data Talks Club Data Engineering Zoom Camp Chapter 2 on Data Orchestration. Today I'm going to be talking about Mage, specifically what is Mage and how does it work. Um, and this is going to follow really nicely from our earlier chat on the developer experience because Mage was built with a lot of these principles in mind, flow state, feedback loops, and cognitive load. The entire experience is kind of designed to minimize cognitive load, improve uh, the ability to iterate quickly on pipelines and build um, uh, data workflows that have software engineering best practices in mind. And so what is Mage? Well, it's an open source tool uh, for orchestrating, transforming, and integrating your data. And when we say integrating your data, we just mean a solution like a Fivetran or an Airbyte, um, taking data from one source and syncing it to another. Mage has an exclusive data integration functionality that's sort of separate uh, from the rest of the tool. And so when we think about Mage, uh, these are the main concepts um, that we need to be familiar with. There are projects, which is sort of like your home base and, and within each project, you can have multiple projects in an instance as well. So that's important to mention. But within each project, there are pipelines. As we discussed, pipelines are like DAGs or data workflows. And then each pipeline is comprised of blocks. And blocks are sort of the atomic units that make up a transformation in Mage. Uh, they can be written in arbitrary Python, SQL, or R. Um, and they can do pretty much whatever you want. But commonly in data engineering, we use blocks to export, transform, or load data. Uh, and so this might seem pretty simple, uh, and it, it really is, but Mage brings a lot of unique functionality out of the box. And that's blocks like sensors, which can uh, trigger on some event, conditionals, which have branching logic, and then if-else logic as well, dynamic blocks that can create dynamic children, uh, and webhooks for additional functionality, and there's much more there too. Um, but as I mentioned, we also have data integration, the concept of unified pipelines or passing objects between your data pipelines, multi-user environments, templating, uh, so much more. And that's kind of what makes Mage magical, right? That's what brings this unique experience uh, to data pipelines in Mage. Um, and so it just creates this really slick um, editing experience, and this is just a GIF of our, our user interface, you know, something that's also unique to the tool. Um, this unique editing experience for building, developing, and sharing data pipelines with the rest of your team. And so that's kind of how Mage accelerates this pipeline development. You know, we have this hybrid environment, our GUI, our graphical user interface for interactive development. But at the same time, you can also do anything with code that you can in the GUI. So you can develop purely in VS Code, and that'll sync, that'll flow right through to the user interface. Um, and blocks being sort of testable, reusable pieces of code make them ideal for software engineering best practices. And through uh, these printables, through this, this design philosophy, we are improving the data developer experience with Mage because it allows you to code and test in parallel and it allows you to reduce your dependencies, maybe only using one or two tools instead of five or six. And so that's the next thing. Mage has a lot of engineering best practices built in. You can test in line and debug in line using a familiar notebook style format. There's fully featured observability capability, um, including integration with DBT for a complete lineage, complete view of your data pipelines, streaming pipelines, batch pipelines, data integration pipelines, and a lot more. And a lot of these concepts specifically uh, around blocks um, allow you to utilize dry principles, don't repeat yourself in engineering speak, which help minimize sort of the messy sort of spaghetti style DAGs that we might see in Airflow, um, and even implement something like data engineering as a service. Sorry about that term, but when I say that, all it means is, oh, hey, maybe you build uh, the framework or the foundation of your data pipeline. So maybe you write blocks and with a user interface, it's easy for your other teammates, maybe even less technical members like analysts to go implement them. Um, but that's not all, right? The, the whole point of this developer experience, uh, this improved tooling is to reduce the time spent in what we're calling undifferentiated work. We want differentiated work. Differentiated work being something that produces a tangible outcome. Undifferentiated work being like set up configuration, stuff that doesn't really do much, right? It's like working without working. And I'm sure we're all familiar with that in a sense, if we've been working for any period of time, right? And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the core concepts in Mage here. Uh, first, we have the idea of a project. And so you can have one or many Mage projects. This is sort of like the overall uh, unit of, uh, <laughs> of an environment, your Mage. Uh, environment can have multiple projects basically. And then within a project, we have pipelines. 
and each project can have as many pipelines as you want. Obviously, these are like DAGs. So like an Airflow instance might have DAGs. A mage project has pipelines. And then within pipelines, we have blocks. And blocks can do all kinds of stuff, right? So projects um, form all the bases for the work you're going to be doing in mage. It's like a GitHub repo. It contains the code for your pipelines, your blocks, your other assets. And a mage instance can have one or more projects, basically. Pipelines, on the other hand, are workflows that perform some operation, moving data from X to Y cleaning data, transforming data, staging data, etc. also known as DAGs, right? And these pipelines contain blocks. Um, now, each pipeline is actually just represented through YAML um, in the pipelines folder of your project. So you could even think about ways to uh, dynamically create pipelines or template pipelines or have some like code-based uh, automation that's, that's creating these pipelines for you. And finally, blocks are fi just files, really, like Python files, SQL files, R files, that can be executed independently or within a pipeline. And so these blocks, as a part of a pipeline, form a directed acyclic graph, a, a workflow. Um, and so the block is obviously uh, managed, the dependencies are managed through Mage. And so it's important to mention that these are really just small pieces of code that Mage is orchestrating. It's a data orchestrator, right? Um, and so because a block is a, is a file, changing it in one place means you're changing it everywhere else. But that's also cool because you might do the same operation in many different pipelines. Instead of writing the same code multiple times, which is not a best practice, um, it's actually an anti-pattern in software engineering, you can use one block and then copy that over into your other pipelines, right? And we make it really simple to duplicate the blocks uh, separate that logic if you need to and create something new, if necessary. So, this is the a block. We're going to talk about the anatomy. And <laughs> sorry, it's uh, you know it's Monday morning. I'm recording this. I can't speak English. The anatomy. Uh, first, we have our imports. We're just declaring uh, what we need for this block. Then we have a decorator. This block is a data loader, so we're declaring it as such. Um, third, we have a function that returns a data frame. Now, this is important. We have to return a data frame in our blocks. Our blocks also accept, see, you can see star args, star star keyword args. Um, so those are useful for parameters or variables, which we'll discuss more uh, later in the course. And then last, we have a test or an assertion. Um, so this test will be run on the output data frame of our block. And that's important to note. And we're going to talk about all of this. I just kind of want to help you get familiar with what a block looks like. The only thing that's getting executed when the block is run is what's inside of the function box here. That's like a main function in Python, if you're familiar. So anything outside, like imports, that'll still run, but it's not going to return anything. So what's being returned is the return function from the block, and that's an important concept. So um, yeah, and here's just a sample data frame that, that's coming through uh, with some, some data. And that's what's going to be passed on downstream to the rest of our blocks. Um, so this is kind of a little bit about what Mage is. Up next, we're going to talk about configuring Mage and running a pipeline. Um, this will be really basic. It'll be a simple intro. We're going to create this pipeline where we read some taxi data, uh, transform it, and then write it to a Postgres database that's all packaged in a Docker container. And we're going to make that really simple for you. So I'm Matt. This is what is Mage. This is our intro. I'm looking forward to getting started on the course with you guys. See ya.